Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Matt, and today I'm joined by Fran from Deloitte's Cloud Platform team, and we're going to be talking about SAP HANA. You know, it's blowing up in the enterprise. I hear about it every day. And you guys have built a platform to enable SAP HANA for the enterprise on AWS. So tell me about it. So a lot of challenges around the SAP space and cloud fits perfectly for, for that. Developing the, the HANA architecture, delivering the HANA architecture makes things great. Great. So yeah, I, I see a lot of enterprises you know, moving from older SAP platforms that are backed by Oracle and SQL Server and also making that, that journey to the cloud. And so it seems like these two waves are kind of coming together. Yeah, perfect timing and a great opportunity for both Deloitte and, and Amazon to move to this large scale footprint on, on HANA. So we do a couple of things. We've bundled our services into smaller clients, medium clients, and, and our larger scale clients. And, and that helps us bundle the services. We'll use Quick Start to deploy the services, and we'll use a lot of the, the AWS managed services and stuff available for high security, for uh, availability, and for cost control. Great, so let, let's jump into the architecture. So I guess starting with EC2, I mean, SAP HANA is a in-memory database that runs on EC2. So how does EC2 translate into the small, medium, and large environments, and, and what characteristics of EC2 are you using? Yeah. So. You know, you know, I'm going to put R3 between small and medium, but the R3 series, memory intensive infrastructure, it comes with solid state drives, which improve the performance in a disk area. There's five sizes. So we can use those five sizes for anything from small with the HANA database to larger for the non-HANA database servers. Okay, right? so you're using the different instance type or EC2 instance type sizes of the R3 to map to different sizes of SAP databases? And yes, yes. And then again, you can move within that R3 uh, architecture as a trusted advisor, you're looking at uh, lower cost, and a lot of SAP clients think about five-year plan instead of six months. We try to get them to, to do a six-month. Start out with something lower than you need, or if you need something higher, we can monitor that through trusted advisor. So that's actually a big change, because a lot of enterprises I work with, they, they look like three, five years out, and then they decide, you know, what SAP appliance am I going to buy? But this allows them to kind of change the size map to EC2 a lot yeah. quicker, is that right? Why buy this when you can get away with this? And then when you need this, let's scale up. So they could be doing like dev test and like evolve the size of their platform? Or, or as their infrastructure grows over the five year period, they move up the okay. stack. So we use R3, small or medium clients and non-SAP HANA. For the large ones, we use X1. Okay, so you said non-SAP HANA. What other SAP workloads or databases are you supporting? Yeah, so could be GRC. You know, there's a whole bunch of servers that make up the HANA platform, yeah. whether they're BW or BI or, yeah. you know, uh, control even solution manager or things like that. So at the high end for these large deployments, you're using the, the very large X1 instance type that, that maps to the SAP HANA. Yeah, database. and again, SSD drives. Yeah. So two flavors here, we're expecting more to come. Five flavors here, we're expecting more to come. So what gives us the ability to scale around that. So you can scale both sort of available storage yeah. in, in memory perspective and also sort of performance from SSD. A absolutely correct. And we can use Trusted Advisor on both of these to manage the cost. Great. Now and we should probably talk about security, right? Yeah, let's, so let's talk about security. So obviously security is very important for the enterprise. Uh, you, you can right size the environments to whatever their business case is or whatever they're trying to do. But how do you adjust security, if at all, between these different tiers? Yeah, we do. So it depends on where they sit. Okay. If they're dev or non-production, we don't need a big security footprint. We can do some things around uh, different VPCs. But if they're premium and they're production, we need security. Everything from EBS encryption, and we use, we, right out of quick start, we turn encryption on. If you're going to put workloads in public cloud, turn encryption on. You can't lose with that as you're starting. So you're running these in a VPC, you're using EBS yeah. encryption to secure the data at rest, yeah. okay. We use Identity Access Manager for control down to the granular level, who can log onto what boxes and what they can do. Okay, so this really is kind of like a managed environment where the security forms part of the larger controls that you do for the customer. Yes, we, we use enterprise-grade firewalls, enterprise-grade load balancers, we're patching, we do vulnerability, external, internal scanning, all that stuff to provide a really robust security platform will be alerted. Okay, so you mentioned Quick Start earlier. So are you using Quick Start to sort of standardize your deployments to, to, to use the CloudFormation templates yes. that come with Quick Start? Yes, and you know, a lot of it's sort of native to SAP folks is, you know, they look at the Quick Start and say, I want to do it myself. Okay. But if you look at the Quick Starts, AWS and SAP have have developed best practices for the quick start to build the VPCs and to build the SAP HANA. So why would you want to do that? And it's 35 minutes. Build on top of those to sort of yeah. add those additional security controls and, and performance tuning, et cetera. Yeah. 
The other thing we look at is uptime, right? So things like auto recovery. You have to use auto recovery, it's free, duh. If a hardware it starts denigrating. So you're talking about EC2 auto recovery? Then? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, use CloudWatch, you're, you're managing it, and you can turn that on with the quick start too. So you're managing it, you, the hardware starts integrating, it automatically moves, brings it up. We use some SAP tools, we do a, a auto restart for services that may fail, and again, that improves our uh, uptime, which lowers our cost. So that's great. I mean, this is a big deal for enterprises. These are enterprises that are used to like long provisioning times that couldn't you know, vertically scale their HANA databases very easily or SAP databases. You know, you're able to do that with Trusted Advisor, leveraging the different EC2 instance types. You're able to apply some enterprise grade security controls and kind of wrap it in a nice service that you offer to customers. And we automate it. We automate the heck out of it. Matter of fact, if we stay here long enough, I'm going to automate you. <laughs> great. <laughs> Well, that's great. Well, I really appreciate you walking through the different characteristics of your architecture, and thanks for taking time with us today. Thanks. Thanks for watching. This is my architecture.